Let's look at the back half of your top 24 players here, Matthew. 13 to 24. We got some running backs in a row here in mm -hmm. Saquon Barkley and Jonathan Taylor. Back to an extensive wide receiver run in Drake London at 15, Marvin Harrison Jr. at 16, Chris Olave at 17, Nico Collins at 18, Devontae Adams at 19, a running back run again at 20 and 21 with Kyron Williams and the King Derrick Henry now in Baltimore. 22, Debo Samuel, 23, Jalen Waddell, 24, Debo's teammate, the man that is in the news quite often, Jay Croucher, in Brandon Ayuk. We will see where that situation ends up. But let's get back to the top here, Jay, with those two running backs. You brought up Saquon Barkley, might be your backup picture option for Twitter. And then Jonathan Taylor behind him at 14, a guy I know you've rooted for in the past. What is the receiving concern with these two? Because we know what they could do on the ground. We know Barkley with the Eagles gives us a little more hope. But how do we project them as receiving backs as well? Yeah, with Barkley, it's interesting because Jalen Hurts famously doesn't really dump off exactly. the running back. So it's going to – but new <laughs> offensive coordinator, I think there will be impetus to change because of how badly it went towards the end of the season. So I think Saquon is still going to get his touches as a receiver. Jonathan Taylor, we'll see. We just haven't – I think he's played two snaps in his career with Anthony Richardson, so we didn't see that. I think, though, like I'm all in Jonathan Taylor. Uh, and unfortunately, I don't have a picture of me and JT. We interviewed him on Zoom once, but it's not the same in terms of a Twitter profile pick, me and JT on Zoom. But uh, I just think that everyone is focusing on Anthony Richardson taking away carries and potentially touchdowns from Taylor. And they're not focusing enough on the fact that when you have a rushing quarterback as a running back, it is a cheat code in terms of running into lighter boxes. Look at what Baltimore's yeah. rushing offense does every single year with Lamar Jackson. Correct. In terms of their efficiency, it's about having like Justice Hill and the ghost of Kenyon Drake as the running backs. It's super efficient. And Taylor, he's had his quarterbacks the past two years, or even three years. Three years ago when he had that 1,800-yard rushing season was an MVP candidate, Carson Wentz was his quarterback. And then it was Matt Ryan. Uh, and then last year, it was Gardner Minshew. So we just haven't seen him with a dynamic quarterback threat. And so Taylor, he's 25 years old. He was got injured going into last year and then got hurt during the season. Uh, and by the way, there was all the weird contract yes, stuff in the offseason. Yeah. The like, vibes it was just were just bad, bad. Bad vibes all yeah. around. And yeah. the team the year before was a mess. It was a complete, uh, utter mess. Coach gets fired and everything. And I just, I think back to the last time we saw Jonathan Taylor in week 18 against the Texans, where he tried to win that game by himself. Yes, he was he an did. absolute force. And no one remembers it because of the screen pass, the Tyler Goodson that gets dropped and the Colts yeah. lose. But JT, he was an absolute monster. He was back to being MVP Taylor. And I think that he can... I, I, think that people aren't thinking about him enough as a guy who could potentially be like an RB1. I think that's fair. I, I think people should talk about that a lot more about how Taylor ended the season. His, his final five games the last season, he scored a touchdown in each of those games and averaged over 100 scrimmage yards. So when it comes to Taylor's and Saquon's, uh, you know, prospects as backs, uh, receiving backs. Uh, I'm not too concerned just based on what they should be able to do on the ground. You got Saquon Barkley here who's never had less than 250 receiving yards in a season, and that's including the times he's missed games. If DeAndre Swift could get 39 receptions for 200 yards and 1,000 rushing yards, you, you up those numbers for Saquon Barkley a little bit. They brought him in to take some more pressure off of Jalen Hurts. So it's not, he's not gonna, they're not gonna try to make him what he was with the Giants and try to make him carry the offense. He, he there to help out and they'll, and they'll do enough to get him his touches. Jonathan Taylor, same difference like Jay, like you said, that, that dynamic quarterback makes this 11 on 11 football and it's gonna help out both Anthony Richardson and Jonathan Taylor. So whatever Jonathan Taylor does get uh, in the receiving game, it'll just be a plus because we've seen him go for 1,800 yards. So we know that type of year is in his bag. He was just talking about going for 2,000 the other day. So yep. People don't yeah. think about as much through last year that Taylor, not only did he play without Anthony Richardson, a lot of his games came without Braden Smith, who was the best tackle on the Colts. And when Taylor was playing with Smith, Taylor's production went way up. The offensive line was banged up in other games. Like the game against Atlanta, Taylor was just, he had no chance. He was running for a yard and then getting hit. So I think that just there was a lot swirling around Tyler I think is all positive there's also I'll, I'll just add very simply this again and I talk about this all the time again just sort of like what's most likely to happen in fantasy and just uh think about the Colts think about if you're Shane Steichen all right you're looking at your okay I got Michael Pittman okay great I got I got Jonathan Taylor I got Anthony Richardson I just lost Josh Downs 
We'll see what I get out of A.D. Mitchell. But the truth of the matter is, and, like, you know, we're still waiting for Jelani Woods, but, like, the fact of the matter is is they didn't add a ton of offensive firepower to this team in the offseason. Mm-hmm. And so you're just sort of – if you're Shane Steichen, you're like, how am I going to win ball games? I'm going to win it on the legs of Jonathan Taylor and the, ar- the arm and legs of Anthony Richardson and getting passes to Michael Pittman. Like, it's a fairly narrow offense. that they. It's got to be those three things. And so I just think, you know – just in terms of ton of volume here, and I, again, like I've given this stat before, but 32 career games with at least 18 touches for Jonathan Taylor, he averages over 21 fantasy points per game. When he gets work, he produces. Again, we've said this. but So, Matthew, this round starts with Saquon Barkley ranked at 13. It ends with Brandon Ayuk at 24. Mm-hmm. How Maybe. big is – Right, we'll see where it goes. How big is the – the tier gap in this round like is this more of a flat round it felt like around when we were really talking mm-hmm. about different ranges of players while this round it feels like it levels off a little bit yeah I think it does like I again like if you if you flash that back up if you flash our our top 24 back up or this second round graphic producer Steven if you can just do that for me I know you're you're busy uh trying to figure out how to you're updating your resume after <laughs> you know talking about the pole vaulters junk that whole time but if you can um uh, if you can just flash that up there. So there, yeah. So if you just look, this is my my tw- my 13 through 24 rankings. And as much as I love Barkley and Taylor, and I'm with you, like I think Derrick Henry's gonna have a monster year. Yeah. I think the difference between Drake London and say Jalen Waddle or Debo Samuel isn't that great. So I do think, to your point, Connor, I think it's a fairly flat, uh, you know, round in terms of tiers. Like if I came out of this round with Derrick Henry or Jalen Waddle or Debo, I'm just as happy as if I came out with like, you know, Drake London or JT, right? You know, I mean, so it, I don't think the dip, I guess my point is, is I don't think, obviously I have them ranked the way I have them ranked. I like Jonathan right. Taylor more than, um, uh, more than Derrick Henry, et cetera, et cetera. But I don't think there's a massive teardrop uh, in this round. And just as you sort of think about this, and we're going to talk about this a little bit later, but just if you start thinking about where you'd like to pick in an ideal world, I would much rather be picking at the end of the second round because you're going to get somebody good at the top of the third, and it means that basically you got one of those first five picks that we talked about, the, the CMC, the Lamb, the Tyreek, the, you know, the Amon Ra, the Jefferson, you know, one of those guys, right? Yeah, we're, we're talking about a guy, Derrick Henry here, who could potentially lead the league in rushing touchdowns now that he's with Lamar Easily. Jackson, as we know. Although Lamar is the ultimate dual threat quarterback, the Ravens do not use him to barge him into the end zone like Jalen Hurts and Josh Allen. He's he's handing off the football. Just on that, they, Lawrence, that's they, a really they, interesting point because I, I believe the stat is inside the five last year, Baltimore running backs got 28 carries and Lamar Jackson got five. That is a much right, bigger discrepancy than you would expect. Right. Yeah, and last year, Baltimore running backs, take Lamar Jackson out of that because he's not a running back. Baltimore running backs combined – for 20 rushing touchdowns. Here were their running backs. Justice Hill, Melvin Gordon, Keaton Mitchell, Ooh. Gus Edwards. Yeah, yeah. and that's that, 20 touchdowns. That was 20 touchdowns. And, like, we like Gus Edwards. And, you know, Keaton Mitchell showed some flashes. But, honestly, so, it was a ghost of Mel- My point is, is, like, yeah. those four guys combined for 20 touchdowns. And I'm not saying, oh, that means Derrick Henry's getting 20 touchdowns. But it doesn't mean I get not. 15, no. It right, might, he might, might get 15, 15. and it, it doesn't mean that he won't either. Like, that's within the range of outcomes. Obviously, he needs to stay healthy, but yeah. Derrick Henry has never seen lighter boxes than he's going to see this, see this year. Yep. He's never in his life. If Baltimore running backs have 20 touchdowns this year, uh, it feels like Henry's got like 17 of them, right? Because yeah. that's yeah. like the percentage that, you know, Christian McCaffrey would get on the Niners. And I think that at the goal line, Henry will clearly be in that double guy, digit at the very least. So if you're wanting Saquon Barkley and or Jonathan Taylor, uh, in the second round and you end up with Derrick Henry like don't be mad no. he's led the NFL and carries for the last five years and he's a big bet for that to happen yeah. uh, like, well he won't lead the lead in carries because you got Lamar there but he'll have opportunity he'll be more efficient he's a, with he's his, a pretty good bet to lead the league in rushing touchdowns he, yeah yep. I would say like that plus 700 type of range yeah. and effectively the favorite with McCaffrey I think this we kind of answered this but Jay are you more excited about the running backs or the wide receivers in this tier it feels like you can get some value in this tier at running back, where we were asking questions about B. John Robinson and Brees Hall. 
where in this tier we were kind of coming up with more answers for a guy like Jonathan Taylor and Derrick Henry. Yeah, I'm more excited about the running backs. I just think the wide receivers, they're just so flat. Like we've got Jalen Waddle 23 here. Jalen Waddle could absolutely have a better season than Drake London or Marvin Harrison Jr. I think yeah. we forget exactly how good Jalen Waddle is and the fact that for the first month or two of last season, he was dealing with injuries and wasn't right. Uh, and also, like, Tyreek Hill's on the other side of 30. And he's a player who's very dependent on his athleticism and his speed. So, And he seems to get hurt every year now, too. So I think with the running backs, like, there's just huge ceiling here between Taylor, we spoke about, Henry's touchdowns. Kyron Williams, there's this idea that, you know, Blake Corum is going to really cut into his work. Like, potentially, let's see it. But, you know, as we spoke about, Sean McVay typically likes to go with one guy. I do buy the Corum aspect just because Kyron doesn't look like a guy who can have, you know, 300 carries and last the whole season. But, I mean, Kyron Williams, when he got, when he became the guy after Cam Akers went 22 carries for 29 yards or whatever in week one last year. Um, Kyron Williams was an absolute beast uh, and he did it against good defenses too. I'll give you one running back that's not on this list that easily could could sneak into this list as long as we're talking like running backs with big upside that are sort of in this range and he's Najee going a little Harris. bit past this. No, not Najee Harris. Although I will say this, I'm kind of back in on Najee oh, this year well. because of yeah. Arthur Smith. You, you yeah. should I'm be. I'm kind of he back in. He was born in. for Arthur Smith. <laughs> yeah. He's revitalized. He was, he was 100%. Back. Yeah. Oh, wait. You mean like somebody that can average 3.2 yards per yeah. carry and all he needs is 20 carries a yeah. game? That guy is born for <laughs> yeah. Arthur Smith. King Harris. Um, Najee Henry. King Harris for sure. <laughs> um, no, Isaiah Pacheco. Okay. Isaiah Pacheco is somebody who I think 100%. is going to have a monster, monster year and could easily sneak up into this uh, – Top 24, but it's this thing we're sort of talking yeah, about. Yeah, I'm about back. to say he got to be at your 25, yeah, yeah, 26. Exactly. He's, right like he's, he's right there. He's he's right there because I just think Pacheco again. He's going to get all the carries for uh, Kansas City. Incredibly talented running back who's add pass catching to his to his repertoire. Not a lot of competition in the backfield on a high octane offense. Jarek McKinnon's no longer there. I mean, his competition is Ceh and Daenerys Prince. You yeah, know what I mean, literally. Like, Little Carson, little, Carson Steele, if you want to go all the way down the roster. Yeah, I mean, like, and right, so. What about the uh, the rugby dude, too? They got him. Yep. That's your yeah. boy, ain't he? Uh, he's not really yeah. my boy. When you start the sentence, though, with the rugby dude <laughs> yeah, being the rugby Pacheco's thing. competition, no, no, you're no, in a good no, no, place no, no, for Pacheco. Can he break dance, though? No, 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 no. no. His, nah, better, his, better than his, his you know, Ray Gunn is his athlete from down under. <laughs> it's That's it. For Jay, it's Ray Gunn and nobody else. Okay. You have a chance to win $1 million in the NBC sweepstakes on Yahoo Fantasy. Just download the redesigned Yahoo Fantasy app or go to NBCSports.com slash Fantasy Million for additional details. What are you waiting for? Hey, it's Matthew Berry from NBCSports.com and RotorWorld.com, and I want to thank you so much for watching whatever it is you just watched. Or if nothing else, being too lazy to click out of the autoplay after this video started, after whatever it is you actually wanted to watch finished. But now that you're here, I'd like to take a moment here to ask you respectfully, respectfully now, okay? I'm asking you respectfully to subscribe to the NFL on NBC YouTube channel. You'll get the latest Roto World fantasy news headlines, all sorts of great shows, including my own fantasy football happy hour. So go subscribe now. Again, I'm asking respectfully.